For decades, plant and tree-based raw materials have been processed to create valuable food and non-food products. Centuries-old examples are bread, wine, sugar and paper. However, little attention has been paid to the side streams of these production processes. New knowledge and technology enable the biomass available on our planet to be utilized even more effectively and environmentally friendly. At the moment, we use side streams for fermentation to generate green energy. It becomes even more interesting if we consider the possibilities of protein valorization. Study the opportunities that exist to extract specific substances from plants. Or the use of cellulose as a raw material for green chemistry. The Dutch biorefinery cluster is happy to explain more about the wealth of opportunities. The Dutch biorefinery cluster is an alliance of cutting-edge businesses active in the Dutch agro-food sector and the Dutch paper and board industry. The participating parties are companies and organizations that have been active in processing biomass into valuable food and non-food products for years. By uniting knowledge, facilities and means, the Dutch biorefinery cluster is making enormous advances in obtaining more value from biomass. Residual products from agriculture and the food industry in particular are receiving specific attention. Many of these bio-based waste flows are actually excellent sources of raw materials for the production of other materials, chemicals and fuel and energy supplies. For instance, residual products from wheat, maize, sugar beet and from waste wood can be used to produce plant-based raw materials that can replace the oil-based raw materials currently produced by the petrochemical industry. This will reduce our dependency on fossil fuels and allow us to achieve more value from wood and agricultural crops. The Dutch Biorefinery Cluster is an initiative of different companies and uh, knowledge institutions to uh, develop new products and uh, new methods uh, which are making use of the insights of the different supply chains resulting in an optimum situation It's much better and higher than optimization within a chain and uh, reducing substantially the environmental side effects. The Dutch biorefinery cluster uses five themes to work on optimally utilizing the possibilities of biomass. These are lignocellulose as a raw material, chemical building blocks from plants, protein valorization, closing the mineral cycle, and valorization of water. The increasing interest for biomass from the chemical and energy sectors is largely focused on cellulose. Worldwide, cellulose is the most available biopolymer, one which does not compete directly with our food chain. Cellulose is found in wood and many plant-based raw materials. It's been used for centuries for many applications. Examples are construction wood, textile, paper, board and animal bedding. The bio-based economy not only helps to widen the range of new applications, it also does so in identifying new cellulose sources. An example of a new promising cellulose source is grass. To investigate the full potential of grass, the dairy sector has initiated the Grasser project. Grasa is an initiative of Courage, the uh, innovation center of the dairy sector in the Netherlands. It gives us opportunities to replace uh, protein from soya to grass protein as uh, a product for the feed industry. It gives also opportunities to uh, produce fiber for the paper and board industry. And we are looking at new innovations and opportunities to produce new products from the juice from grass. It gives us opportunities to produce in a more sustainable way. Plants contain a host of valuable components, the potential of which is not being fully harnessed. All the reason for the Dutch biorefinery cluster to start investigating the options. The ability of plants to produce exceptional, complex compounds is central in this respect. Compounds that could play a vital role in new bio-based chemistry and the production of specific natural materials. 
Traditional plant breeding or genetically modified organisms can also be used to increase the concentration of certain compounds in plants. This will allow even higher value components to be made from plants. In the future, sugar beet will not be grown just to produce sugar. We have already noted success in converting beet pulp into biomethane. Even the horns, which are until now discarded as waste on the field, can be used to produce fertilizers, fibers and sustainable energy. Protein is one of the valuable components found in the plants. To satisfy the ever-growing global demand for protein for use in food and feed, it's essential to extract and add value to the valuable protein in residual flows. We call this protein valorization. A modern example of protein valorization is extracting protein from potatoes. Solanic, a full subsidiary of RVB, is the first to develop a commercial potato-derived protein for human consumption. In cooperation with various food producing companies, Solanic is researching applications in a range of consumer products. You can compare this step with potato starch. We are isolating starch from potatoes now for more than 100 years. Potato starch is used in very much different uh, technical applications, so we can do now the same with uh, potato protein so that we can gain more value from the potato. At the same time, Work is in progress on cultivating new protein-rich raw materials, such as algae and lupins. Friesland Campina, Kosen and RVB are studying the possibilities of growing algae on various mineral and sugar-rich residual flows from the food industry. Residual products are converted here into high-value vegetable protein. To safeguard sufficient supplies of raw materials in order to be able to fuel the bio-based economy in the future too, it's vital to keep mineral loops closed as much as possible. Recycling is necessary to avoid the decreasing supplies of phosphate in the world from drying up and to reduce the energy consumed by mineral extraction. It's high time to develop technology that can extract minerals such as nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus from wet waste streams. That's precisely what the Dutch biorefinery cluster is working on, making these minerals reusable as nutrients. Emission neutral agriculture in the Netherlands should be achieved by the year 2030. Main goals with regard to this objective are uh, a maximum uh, return on investment and optimum minerals for use uh, by the agriculture in order to assure food supply and to fulfill the increasing demand of non-food. Next to minerals, processed water often contains many organic components. Until recently, the techniques used to purify processed water were primarily aimed at eliminating these substances through a process of decomposition. The water was then discharged. Speaking from the Dutch biorefinery cluster's viewpoint, we would do things differently. Purifying should be replaced in the short term by valorization processes, whereby individual, often valuable components are extracted from the water and reused. This will allow us to close the internal water cycle even further. We are here at the wastewater treatment of Crown van Gelder, a paper producer in the Netherlands. Recently, we discovered that in this wastewater there are components that are valuable. Right now we are building equipment to get those polymers and fatty acids out of the water. The five themes occupying the Dutch biorefinery cluster's attention illustrate the dynamism of our bio-based economy. By uniting knowledge, facilities and means, the Dutch biorefinery cluster is making enormous advances in obtaining greater value from biomass. To fully benefit from the opportunities this offers, it's essential that we all work together. This way, we can build interesting business cases and take responsibility for our own living environment. A win-win situation from which we all profit. <laughs>